this cable this is less than ideal so let's come up with a better solution this is the VGA cable from a GBS 8200 which has been modified with GBS control that's currently fitted to the video slot in my EATX 2000 and when I built this the easiest solution on the day for getting the video cable out was just to remove one of the expansion slot covers and run the wire through but it's a mess I don't like it like this but I've got an idea to fix it I was looking through my drawer of random cables looking for something for a completely different project and stumbled across this it's a VGA breakout cable presumably off some old motherboard with integrated VGA graphics but I was wondering if we could just cut this up and make the wire here off onto the bottom of the VGA connector or the VGA output from uh, GBS we could go on to the bottom of that or go on to the bottom of that that is a VGA output as well 12 pin connector unfortunately that is completely different so just can't plug it in but I'm sure we could do something on the bottom side here so despite having 15 pins the VGA connector as far as we're concerned today anyway it really only carries five signals RGB on pins 1 2 and 3 horizontal and vertical sync on pins 13 and 14. I think just for handiness sake it probably would be easier just to make off our ribbon onto this. Pin 1 which is red sorts through to that point. Pin 2 which is green is through to pin 3 on this. Pin 3 on the VGA connector which is blue should be 5 on this. Horizontal and vertical sync. Horizontal sync is 13. I think it's uh, that one. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then vertical sync to pin 14 should be 8. And yes, it is. So just a matter of cutting this up then and figuring out which of these cores go to which pins on that. And yeah, just taking a quick look at this. However, wired this up in the first place, it is done in order. Pin 1 on the red side of the ribbon cable here. That is indeed to pin 1 on the connector. And it just runs through. So this should be relatively straightforward. We need the first three. Those three, they'll carry the RGB signal. And then we need the two from the end, 13 and 14. Those two, they're carrying the horizontal and vertical sync then we just need to pick up a couple of grounds now the VGA standard does carry supposedly individual grounds for the RGB and for sync but in reality on the PCB they are all joined up anyway so I will take a couple though we can't use pin 4 that's not actually a ground so we'll just move that one out of the way but 5, 6, 7 and 8 they're all grounds so we can certainly make use of those and I suppose if we're going to the trouble of hooking them up well we just hook up the other one as well which is on pin 10 which is the ground the sink ground which would be that one so those four or sorry those five will be grounds time to do a bit of soldering and the first one we want there is red and then it'll be green And then blue. Oh, I didn't tin that one up. I tinned all these up, but I obviously missed blue. In fact, you know what? If we're doing right, I'm just going to cut these down a wee bit. there that looks a bit better okay that is it all hooked up I put this bit of captain tape on here just to hold it while I was soldering it but I think what I'll actually do is just take that off maybe move it down a bit put it about there put that back on and that'll just help to secure the cable 
ultimately this is going to sit in the case. Something like that. The 3D printer hasn't finished the new bracket yet. So I've just reattached the silver one for now, just to do a test fitting. The cart goes in there. And then the bracket. Oh. I had sort of hoped that the bracket would go into that slot, which would be the same slot that the card is in, but that's not going to work. Looks like it will have to go into that one below it. So I'll just move that blank up to that slot that I was taking the cable out through. And then the bracket should fit in there. But let's give it a quick test. So monitor on and Amiga on. Okay, we're in the workbench, but this is the RTG screen coming out of the Pi Storm. We need to run something in one of the Amiga's native modes to see if our cable works. Let's go for Road Avenger. And if I switch the monitor into its VGA mode, yeah, there it is. Everything is working fine. Let's try the 3D printed bracket, because it would certainly look better than that silver one. Well, the printer's finished, and here is my black bracket, my extended black bracket. And I'm sure you're wondering, why is it this shape? Well, the GBS sitting in the 2000s video slot here, it is a bit wobbly. So if I just take this out, the idea is that with this in here, like that, hopefully this fits. There we are. With that in there like that and screwed into place, it should just help hold the GBS up level. Now it won't be attached to the bracket, but so long as it holds it, stops it drooping, I think that's fine. Gravity can do the rest. So I'll just take the whole thing out of here. And we just need to remove this and attach it to this. A lot cleaner looking now from the back. It is nice not to have that cable hanging out through the back of the case. And when I put the side panel on, well, you can't really see it from the reflection, but here in person, it looks fantastic. Now I know what you're thinking, the card is in the video slot, but the bracket is fouling this top Zorro slot. And yeah, that would be the case if it was a full size Zorro card, but we do still have one, two, three, four full size slots. And the likes of this half size Zorro card, well, I could always even move that up to there. Although I do have another couple of half size Zorro cards yet to build. In fact, I think I've only got one full size Zorro 2 card to build for this machine. So in reality, I don't really think it's going to cause any problems. Well, that's it for this mini build video. If anyone wants to print that bracket for themselves, I'll leave a link to it down in the video's description. You can download it from Thingiverse, but really only suitable for use in this setup with the EATX 2000. The normal Amiga 2000 has its video slot on the far side of the board, just sitting there by itself, and there is just the one expansion slot for it. But for the way I have it, and like any half-decent modern GPU, you need two expansion slots. See you in the next one.